It's a question my wife asks me almost every single day, it seems, is when is Game of Thrones coming back? And it returns for Season 7 this Sunday at 9 Eastern on HBO. And the man who plays the King of the North, Jon Snow, Kit Harrington, here on The Rich Eisen Show. Thank you for coming in. Thank really you for appreciate having that. Me. You bet. So what has this experience been like for you to play Jon Snow on a, in an internationally renowned show like Game of Thrones? I mean, Kit. you can't predict being a part of something like this. When I, first, when I got this show, I was you know, pretty much fresh out of drama school. I was 22 years old. And um, and then it's it's completely it's you know it's been the whole of my twenties and it's it's been the major part of my life. It's been incredible. And like, so did you read the books when you first got the gig? Essentially, sit I down did. And do yeah, some yeah, reading? yeah. I read the books. I kind of I got I got the gig. Then I knew the books existed, so I read the books. So I knew it was kind of had potential to be this amazing series, this this very complex, interesting um, fantasy. Um, but yeah, and no one else seemed to read the books. I think I was the only one that did. No, hold on a second. Really? Are yeah, you saying? seriously, yeah. Other Everyone... other actors and actresses on Game of Thrones didn't sit down and do any reading? You're no. No, well, no, I'm shopping them all in now. I, I don't know. Maybe they maybe some of them did, but I think I was one of the only ones who kind of maybe went went that far to read those tombs. Yeah. And so who is Jon Snow, do you think? <clears throat> who is he? Yeah. Like in what sense? Who is he? Hmm, how about this? Is is he as good as he seems to be deep down, deep down, as a good dude that we should all be rooting for? I think I, I I I don't know. You know, I, only I know his bad sides, and I'm never going to tell you what they are. His, his, the, the scenes you never see, the scenes that uh, where he's a mm -hmm. horrible, insipid character. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he is. He's just. A, He's a good man. He's like the. He's pretty much one of the only good guys in the story, and that's a that's a, that's a nice thing to to play. You know, you, there's a lot of other people like Uan who plays Ramsey Bolton, who just gets abuse in the street, or Jack Leeson who who played Joffrey, just mm -hmm. so much abuse in the street because people can't detach them from the character. Mm -hmm. Whereas I I get a lot of love because a lot of people seem to kind of root for John. That is true. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, there's a photograph my wife, I took of my wife right after the episode where you died, spoiler alert, <laughs> and her hand is over her mouth. She can't handle the truth of what's happened. And we honestly sat in quiet for five minutes, F full solid five minute, dead quiet. Yeah. Did you know at the time when that happened? that you would be coming back to life? Or did you have a period where you did not know as an actor that Jon Snow had passed? I had a two week period where I was um, pretty silent for those two weeks after reading the script. I didn't know. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know whether I was gonna, I was out of a job. You know, I pretty much convinced myself I was out of, out of a job. I was like, okay, well this was a good series. You know, this was a lot of fun. You got some good money. It was good for a while. <laughs> it was a good run. It was yeah, a good run. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, you do other things. And then when they told me that I was I was coming back, I, I couldn't have, you know, I couldn't have, you know, when you lie to yourself and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And then you get the news and you go, yes, thank God. <laughs> 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 so I knew actually deep down that I didn't want to leave the show. But so. I'm sure people who were close to you were coming up to you asking you the same question. Did you have to keep that under wraps? Yeah, I kind of did. I, I did for a little while and then... And you can't, like, it affects too much of your life to go, so, so, like, one of your best friends comes up and says, so you're, what, you're out of a job now? Like, you're not in Thrones anymore? What's going on? And mm -hmm. you, you can't just lie to them and go, yeah, so what are you going to do next year? Do you want to go on holiday? Well, I, yeah, I have this other thing. What's the other <laughs> thing? Well, I don't know. I can't. You can't string those lies along for too long. Mm -hmm. So eventually you have to tell people. But it is weird, your whole life being a cliffhanger. I didn't like that off bit of that season because it's strange that you feel like part of your life is a cliffhanger as well as as this fictional characters in the show. So you did not, when did you learn how you were going to come back to life? When you got the first script, did you reach out to the producers or writers? To... I, didn't, I didn't know how I was coming back to life. I mm -hmm. just knew that they said, don't cut your hair. You know, <laughs> that's basically what they said. Yeah. Don't change anything. Don't go do anything drastic. We don't want to tell you this because we wanted you to be worried, but now we have to tell you. So why would they want you to be worried? Because they're sadistic. The showrunners are sadistic. <laughs> have you not noticed that yet? Yes. They're so horrible. 
they're horrible people. They like causing pain. Um, so yeah, they, I, uh, I, they, they, you know, they, they, they did tell me, and I, and and, and I'm safe. I'm Kid, safe. Kid Harrington, the uh, actor from Game of Thrones, the man who plays Jon Snow, the current King of the North here on The Rich Eisen Show. So you have, in a recent interview with Entertainment Weekly, said Sansa and Jon Snow have tension and that a power struggle is coming. Can you put any more meat on those bones for fans of the show? Me and Sophie, in, in real life, um, feel very much like brother and sister. We squabble a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, we get we get at each other. It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of bring that... Yeah, I think they kind of... The thing about Thrones is they sort of use what you have what what us as actors are kind of using in real life how we how we kind of get on in real life and then they embellish that into the series is that so yeah it's quite it's quite an interesting way of doing what, things what examples from the past have have uh, that you can lay out here is something that they've done for snow i always snow. commented on how how short i am <laughs> in life so they keep putting that into john snow you know, being small, having a tiny pecker, <laughs> you know, stuff like this. It's just, they just, they just want to rip the piss out of you. Why does that, they are really sadistic yeah, people. Yeah, I guess yeah, for not, people who have created Ramsey Bolton in the Red Wedding and think, well, the Red Wedding was in the books, but yeah. Ramsey Bolton, I mean, the scene with the dogs and just Yeah, horrible. David Benioff and Dan Weiss, they're not nice people, I mm -hmm. promise you. They're, they're really not nice. So what can you tell us about this scene? Are you, first of all, are you done shooting? Are you finished? Is it all... In the we, can? We, yeah, we finished season seven. So that's in the can. Mm -hmm. Can't tell you if I'm in season eight. I'm still in a lot of peril. Okay. So um, you have to wait and see. But um, yeah, we finished that. It's, it's, it's an amazing season. It's, it's going to be a different type of epic. We did seven episodes instead of ten, so we could put so much more of resources into, into those seven episodes. And, and there's some great battle sequences. There's some... It, like we push CGI to the to new limits this this year, so it's going to be it's going to be very good. It's going to be exciting. Do you have any idea if you're going to be involved in any anything that happens after Game of Thrones is over? There's so much conversation about other shows, spinoffs, if you will, of Game of Thrones. Do you know if you're going to be involved in anything of that nature? I'm not sure you could do a Jon Snow spinoff. It might just be too morbid. <laughs> too, Why too, would that be? I mean, you can't, you're not going to die. I mean, you're going to come back, right? You're sort I don't of un, know. you're no. unkillable in that respect. I think we're I think we're 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 done. The current cast is sort of done with with Game of Thrones once it's done. But there's so much scope for spin-offs. I'm sure they'll do other things in that world, and I hope they do because it's such a rich world. Mm -hmm. And what's uh, your, what's your favorite fan theory that you've heard? My favorite Kit, fan. that somebody's come up to you and yeah. came up with a a theory about Jon Snow. Or anything about Game of Thrones that the, threw you for a loop. There was a, a there was a weird one where it's, it almost doesn't make sense. But they kind of this 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 guy came up to me and said that are you like that he thought that it would all end and it would pan out and it had all been one of like my it been a dream. Ghost had been having a dream. Does that make sense? Like Ghost, my direwolf, hmm. had dreamt it all somehow so game of thrones is and that was that was his theory and he was dead serious about it i went that is please never become a screenwriter that is the worst <laughs> ending can you imagine if it ended like that everyone would be like what that it, it ends and it just zooms in on yeah ghost. like the worst ending like they wake up and it's a dream but actually it's it's a dog dream i mean well i think dreadful. the worst would be is that it it, it would not be ghost a dire wolf but it would be ghost, just a regular dog in in a house. In a house, Somewhere in downtown and you're LA. and you're the one who's coming. I'm hi, honey. I'm home, and you just flip ghost a snack. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with Westeros. Yeah, nothing to do with King's Landing. It's all Landing been a canine anything. dream. That I mean, actually, now I'm talking about it. That's that would be if you really wanted to piss off everyone who'd been watching <laughs> for the whole time. Spinoff. That's Spin all I'm off. saying. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah. The ghost and Jon Snow, and and we and it actually we we find out that when it's all said and done, you did know nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. when it all come and come and gone. <laughs> Kit Harrington is here. We're going to take a sixty second break. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit of sport. Did I use that properly Brilliant. with you? Yeah. Because we say sports. Sport? No, sports. It's sports in the UK. It, it is. Yeah, yeah. I just try to think. sound smarter. <laughs> okay. Kit Harrington is here from Game of Thrones. We're back with more in sixty seconds.
Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show. Another segment with Kit Harrington. A Game of Thrones again premieres season seven this Sunday at nine Eastern time on HBO. Um, you are a fan of Man U, correct? I'm a lifelong Manchester United fan. Why yes. is that? Is that from your neck of the woods? Is it just a team that you grew up loving? Or how did you get involved with love of Manchester United? I grew up Kit? in London and then moved to a place called Worcester. I didn't even go to Manchester till I was about... 11 years old. I'm what they call a true red. I've never been, okay. never went to the place, didn't grow up in it. Mm -hmm. But I grew up next to uh, uh, an Irish family who, and there's a big contingency of Manchester United fans in Ireland. And my parents weren't really into football or sport, but me and my brother idolized one of mm -hmm. one of the sons in this family, one of the, one of the, one of the guys who's a bit older than us. And I, I kind of picked the team because he supported them. Mm -hmm. So Manchester United is, is your team. Yeah. And so Wayne Rooney, Mm -hmm. After 13 years, yeah, of good good service, he, been a good, servant to the club. No, yeah. no question. Yeah. Now he goes back to again. I'm, I'm going to try and use the phrase boyhood team because that's not yeah. a phrase that we use in the United States. His boyhood team, Everton. Yeah, where he he broke in uh, as a 16 year old. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you make of of that maneuver by Wayne? I'm Rooney? really I'm happy about it actually. I'm I'm. I kind of think it's the right choice on his part. He has a young family. Obviously, he doesn't want to uproot them. I think he's... I, I think that those Everton fans that were so furious with him for leaving that club and coming to United, I don't think... You know, he wanted to go and play for one of the biggest clubs in the world. He came to our club. He's our, He was our greatest ever goal scorer. Mm -hmm. He's been amazing for us. And now he's going back to the team he supported since he was a boy that the one he joined first. And I think that's a lovely full circle. You know, I think that's a great, great thing that he's doing. And I, I kind of salute him for it. And you know, I wish him luck at Everton. I think that's that's an amazing move. Well, are, are, are there Manchester United fans who think differently from that, who think he's, he, they begrudge him from going back to his roots? See, no, I don't and, think so. I think you'd be, you'd be very, you'd be very sad person if you, if you begrudged him that. And I think, I hope the Everton fans welcome welcome him back with open arms as well because mm -hmm. I think he's still got, you know, he's a different player now. He's lost his pace, he's lost his legs a bit, but he's still a, he's got an incredible, um, incredible brain on him, incredible footballing brain, and I think, and his instincts still there. I think mm -hmm. he's still got a couple of really good years in him for for Everton. So I hope that they welcome him back. I'm sure they will. Did you ever try your hand at football? I was a I was a rugby player when I was young. Rugby. Yeah, I was a scrum half <laughs> in rugby. That means nothing to you, does it? Well, I'm trying <laughs> to actually. You just I tried not to belie my thorough ignorance. Yeah. But you did see. I saw was that. It, I saw glazed, it was a glazed really? look. No, I mean I'm, I'm I'm hanging on your every word, kid. <laughs> yeah. There's no question about that. But what do you what 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 do you mean by by rugby? Uh, no, no, by, not rugby. What you, what, <laughs> what was what's the phrase that you used? Uh, scrum half. Okay. Scrum half's the little guy. Okay. He's the smallest guy in the scrappy. rugby team. You're scrappy. Yeah. Scrappy, yeah. He's, he's hard to catch. Uh, and he's, he takes the ball out of the scrum half, and he's a back, and he, and he gets it out to the backs. Mm -hmm. the, back, it, the back line, you might say. So did you realize early on that perhaps acting was the better way for you to go? Is that what you're saying? I or? remember the tackle that did it, yeah. What was that? Uh, I, you know, I was, I was all right at rugby. I was playing quite a high level. But there's something that happens to young men when they go from being like 16, 17 years old to suddenly I was playing at 18 years old. And you know when young men go from being young men to men. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I got hit with a tackle. And I was in the drama society at the same time as being in the rugby <laughs> team. And I kind of, I thought, I gotta, I gotta protect this, you know? The money maker. I gotta, I gotta protect the money maker. <laughs> One more hit like that to my face, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I can kiss acting goodbye. Were you the only hybrid at the time, being drama and rugby? Were you the only guy who was? I think I was doing like, both. At the I time? was trying to pick the two things I ke I could to get the most girls. <laughs> so like, being a, like a jock, yeah, and also doing acting, like so being the artistic kind of mysterious one. Mm -hmm. It was all motivated by chasing skirt. Well. Kid, I think it's worked out for you. <laughs> uh, there's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely worked out for you. And yeah. that this, this show is just phenomenal. It's just truly remarkable. And it's, it is, as you pointed out in our previous segment, it can be vicious mm -hmm. and sadistic. Mm -hmm. And people seem to not be able to get enough of that. 
and then there's dragons. Mm -hmm. I think it's and it's um, it's coming to its conclusion now, obviously, and it's. I think it's. I think it's sort of. An, it's really. It's changed the way TV works in many ways. Mm -hmm. It's changed how 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 a story moves along, and 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 narrative within TV. And I think what's going to be interesting now is watching people people's reactions to the last this season and the last season. I think it itself changes. It's going to the, the, this season is very different. It moves far with far more pace. And season eight. That yeah. has not been shot yet, is what you're saying? No. Okay. No. Do you know how this winds up? I haven't got a clue. I've got my own theory. Like what? Later. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna Come say no. I can't. On. I can't. Come on. No, I really can't because I actually think I'm right. Uh, and that makes it that 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 makes it even more wrong no. for you to not say anything. I like can't. That. I really can't. No, I'd love to, Rich, but I just can't. Do you? Is does? All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut around the edges then. Uh, does it involve you knowing who? becomes who does sit on the Iron Throne. I'm pretty certain episode. I know who sits on the Iron Is it throne. your ass in the Iron Throne? I can't say. <laughs> okay. I can't. Okay. Yeah. What what makes you think you're so right? I just, that I you know something? You, normally, you know, I've been, again, the I've been like you everyone, know nothing. I've, I've been trying to figure this out like everyone has for, for years. And then I had an a, a, a epiphany the other night and I, I suddenly saw it. The other night? I suddenly realized what how it ends. What? Um. And I'm not saying because I I I'm 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 going to ask David Benioff when I see him later because I think I've figured it out. Will he give you a straight answer? No, he never gives anyone a straight answer. Does he even know? Do you think? No. Him, well, Dan Weiss and David Benioff definitely know. Yeah. They know how this is going to wind up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. I hope so. Otherwise, I hope so. well, I don't know. I mean, otherwise they're bricking it as well. <laughs> they're bricking it. <laughs> they don't know what's okay. What's coming? And so, well, at least we know that you're in season eight. Can't say. Oh, come Sorry. on. Sorry. Nope. Nothing. Did you see how I tried that right there? Yeah, I'm an expert, though. I've been doing this for years. I can't Is that say, right? Yeah, yeah, Just deny everything. Well, I, I, I work in sports for a living, so yeah. interviewing subjects are always trying to stonewall me. <laughs> yeah. I know I know the way around it every now and then, but yeah. I'm trying to get something nah. out of you. Is there a major a character that we know, mm -hmm. major character, Yeah. from season one mm -hmm. all the way to the present day, Yeah. that perishes in season seven? Um... Very, I mean, there's a, there's very, no, no. No! Don't know, no oh, one dies oh, this year. Not no a single person. Year. Is there anybody, <laughs> it's a really boring season. Is there anybody that comes no, back? No anybody dies. that comes back? Anybody that comes back? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No one comes back, no one dies. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, nothing really. I don't, <laughs> honestly, honestly. It's getting so complex now to try and sell the show because I don't know what to tell you, All right. what to what to tease you with. Well, I mean, other than it's just Game of Thrones. Yeah. People die. People die. Okay. Yeah. Um, shocking things happen. Yeah. There's there's huge. I mean, death count wise. Okay. There's, uh, like this this is probably the biggest season. Death Lots count. of nudity. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's dragons, mother of dragons, mm -hmm. who is our favorite, right? Brockman, would you say that that's your favorite character, mother of dragons? I would say Jon Snow's my favorite character. Well, yeah, I mean, outside of, outside of present that company, don't show me up. That's so wrong. Sorry. <laughs> outside of present company. Yeah, but, thank you. Okay. You were, um, and last one is, how do you consume the shows? Do you watch them on Sundays? Have like a, a, a Kit Harrington viewing party? I watch it on my own. What do you mean? I don't know. I can't watch them with other people. What do you mean? Because I sit, I, I sit there in, in a state of nervous tension. And I, I only watch them once, and I watch them on my own in a dark room. And then, what um, do you mean nervous tension? You I'm, know no, what happens. But I'm, whoop, I'm whooping, and I'm enjoying it, and I'm like, but I'm on my own. It's, it's, it's sad. It's a sad thing. <laughs> <laughs> do you need a hug right now, Kit? Yeah, would I you, might do, would you like? <laughs> would you like to end with a hug? Yeah, let's end with a hug. All right, here we go. Here we go. Bring it in. This is great. Bring it in. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it.